Well, how many White House chiefs of staff have to go to prison to convince future White House chiefs of staff that they are not above the law? You would think that the answer is one. And that happens to be exactly the number of White House chiefs of, chiefs of staff who have gone to prison for committing crimes in the White House. And no White House chief of staff since then has ever been the focus of a criminal investigation again. Until now. Until Donald Trump's last White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who has already done more damage to Donald Trump than anyone who worked for him in the White House by handing over his text messages and other electronic communications to the January 6th committee. That is how we found out that Donald Trump's oldest son, the one named after him, was texting Mark Meadows on January 6th to tell him just how bad the attack on the Capitol looked for his father. That's what Donald Trump Jr. was worried about. Donald Trump Jr.'s relationship with his father was apparently not good enough for him to actually tell his father that directly. Mark Meadows turning over his text to the January 6th committee also revealed to us that Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife was texting Mark Meadows with utterly insane criminal urgings about refusing to peacefully transfer the presidency to the duly elected President Joe Biden. Mark, Mark Meadows' texts were how we found out that all of the Fox propaganda players, the primetime players especially, were texting Mark Meadows on January 6th, trying to get him to get the President of the United States to tell his followers to stop committing crimes at the Capitol on January 6th. And of course, the President refused to do that. Recent reports have indicated that Donald Trump's attorneys have been very, very worried about Mark Meadows. They weren't sure if Mark Meadows might be in some way cooperating with Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's investigation of Donald Trump's possession of government documents, as well as Jack Smith's investigation of Donald Trump's attempts to overturn the presidential election leading up to and on January 6th. And today, we learned Mark Meadows has testified to Jack Smith's grand jury. This is the single most important information that we have learned today about Jack Smith's criminal investigation of Donald Trump and Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows' criminal defense lawyer, who is the most widely respected criminal defense lawyer representing anyone in the Trump investigation, told the New York Times, quote, Without commenting on whether or not Mr. Meadows has testified before the grand jury or in any other proceeding, Mr. Meadows has maintained a commitment to tell the truth where he has a legal obligation to do so. In other words, the New York Times reporting is correct. Mark Meadows has testified to the grand jury. That's as close as Mark Meadows' highly experienced Washington criminal defense lawyer could come to publicly revealing that his client has indeed testified to the grand jury. ABC News is reporting tonight. Sources tell ABC News that Meadows answered questions on both Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election and Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents. In the grand jury, if Mark Meadows made the mistake of not telling the truth, then he will probably become the second White House chief of staff in history to be convicted of crimes. And they might actually be the identical criminal charges that sent Bob Haldeman to prison in 1975. Bob Haldeman was one of 48 people who were convicted of crimes or pleaded guilty in the investigation of criminal conspiracies involving Republican President Richard Nixon that came to be known as the Watergate investigation. Bob Halderman was President Nixon's White House chief of staff. He behaved in, con in conspiracy with the president as if he and the president were above the law. They both found out the hard way that they weren't. As the criminal investigation closed in on Richard Nixon and assured that he would be impeached by the House of Representatives, and Republican senators told 
the Republican president, that he would also be convicted and removed from office by the Senate. That's what made Richard Nixon resign the presidency in 1974. And a month later, President Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon for all the crimes Richard Nixon committed during his presidency. And Richard Nixon then lived the rest of his life a free and disgraced man. It wasn't so easy for Bob Haldeman, who a year after President Nixon was forced to resign, was convicted in 1975 of conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and perjury. Three counts of perjury. Tonight, Mark Meadows may be on his way to being charged with those exact crimes. Or Mark Meadows might be a cooperating witness against Donald Trump, the kind of witness who could become the star witness in both of Jack Smith's investigations of Donald Trump. Mark Meadows was a 16-year-old boy in Brandon, Florida, attending Brandon High School the day Bob Haldeman went to prison. There were sharp, politically-minded 16-year-olds in those days who were very aware of every aspect of Bob Haldeman's crimes. But maybe Mark Meadows wasn't one of those kids. Maybe Mark Meadows at 16 was completely oblivious, as maybe most 16-year-olds might have been, to what happened to Bob Haldeman. Mark Meadows appears to have remained completely oblivious to the life lesson for everyone in Washington that Bob Haldeman's story represents. Bob Haldeman told his sentencing judge, I'm sorry for what I've done, for what I've been responsible for, for what's been the result and the damage to many, many people, and I think our whole governmental system. Mark Meadows should have issued that statement word for word. On the night of January 6th, he was responsible for allowing Donald Trump to get to the point where Donald Trump was the rhetorical leader of an attack, a violent attack on the Capitol. Mark Meadows could have tried to stop all of that, and he didn't try to stop any of that. When you're the White House chief of staff and you do nothing to stop a criminal president from doing damage to our whole governmental system, as Bob Haldeman put it, then you are responsible. Mark Meadows is responsible. In a letter to his sentencing judge, Bob Haldeman wrote, I recognize the terrible cost to the nation that this whole Watergate case has represented. And I will carry for the rest of my life the burden of knowing that I played a major role in that tragedy. The rest of Bob Haldeman's life was not as long as it should have, as it should have been. He died at age 67. We could only hope that Mark Meadows will carry for the rest of his life the burden of knowing that he played a major role in the national tragedy of January 6th and possibly played a major role in committing crimes of obstruction of justice with and for Donald Trump. Republican memories are too short. During the Trump years, Republicans forgot about the Nixon years. Donald Trump foolishly thought that he was smarter than Richard Nixon. And Mark Meadows forgot or never even knew about the Bob Haldeman years as White House, White House Chief of Staff and the Bob Haldeman years in federal prison.